All right. So we're, we're going to make a map um, on Open Orienteering Mapper that is from an image and not a OCAD file. And we're going to show you how to use that in Purple Pen. So first things first, you want to have a picture of the map that you're going to use. Uh, I'm pretty sure it needs to be like PNG or JPEG. Uh, so if you have a PDF, you can go to uh, like PDF to PNG converter and then just convert it like that. So um, to start, make sure you have the image and then go to open street maps and find the area that you're mapping. So we're going to go to Valley Forge, right, which is right here and the area I want a map of is this Mount Misery area. So I'm going to hit export and then manually select a different area. So typically in this step, you want to get as many roads as you can that's in that are in the area because those are what makes it easy to line up. So we're going to take this area, we're going to export the OSM file and we're going to put it uh, where the map image is. So I'm going to go look for it. Orienteering, mapping, maps, Valley Forge, Misery. So I'm going to call this misery.osm. And then, so what you want to do is open, uh, you want to open up Open Orienteering Mapper which is I always find difficult. I don't know why. Um, you want to create a new map. Okay, open our dream mapper. Found it. So we want to create a new map um, that is 1 to 10,000 or whatever the scale of your map photo is. And um, you can have whatever symbols you want because we're not going to be using these. So uh, first thing you want to do is click file and then, or, or uh, sorry, template, open template. And then you want to open up your uh, OSM file. So wherever you download the OSM file here, I found misery.osm. I'm going to open it up. And then once you open that up, you'll be greeted with the georeferencing. And here you want to click UTM. Um, and the OSM will have load the relevant data. So you don't have to change any of this except the declination. Um, you want to click look up. It'll bring you to a web page with the declination. Since this is 11.81 degrees west, because it's west, it's in, I want to put uh, negative 11.81. And then click OK. So here is the OSM data that's georeferenced and loaded in. So now what I want to do is open another template and then pull in the PNG file. So you, I click open template. I open the PNG. And then here uh, you can do open it however you want. And uh, Actually, wait, that did not work. Um, oh no, it did work. It was just hiding it, sorry. So yeah, I'm pretty sure you can open the template with whatever you want, whatever settings here, and then it should bring it in. And then if you click check mark down at the bottom here, um, down at the side, it will show up and disappear, so. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the opacity of the map to 50%. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is start, why can I not reposition? Do I need something on the map? Oh, because georeference. Okay, so never mind. We're going to get rid of it and then upload it again. 
this time using the meters per pixel and we're just gonna put one. Uh, so obviously that's way too big. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the opacity to 50% and then um, we're gonna take this tool down here that is the adjust tool. We're gonna open that and we see this new window here, the adjust window. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at points on our map that align with points on the OpenStreetMap data. So we only need a couple if the points are accurate. So if we click new and then for example, we look at this intersection, it's a pretty obvious feature that's on the map and it's also on the OpenStreetMap data. So first we click on the intersection and then we click on the OpenStreetMap data where we want this intersection to go. So in this case, I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna go down to the corner and turn the map off and then I'm gonna find the intersection, um, which in this case is right here. Boom, so now I have, now if I turn the map on and off, you can see that the intersection on the map is going to the intersection on the OpenStreetMap data. So I'm gonna do that for a few more points. Uh, we'll do this intersection here and we'll turn the map off. And I believe that, let me look at it again, but that is, oh no, it's a different intersection than I thought. Is it this intersection? And then I'm gonna pick a few more points. The more points you have, the more accurate you can get. So I'm gonna pick this point and then put it here. And then let's see what other data do I have? Oh, I should have probably got a bigger street map thing, um, but it's fine. We can take the yeah, well, we'll see how that does. So that, this is an example. You can get more points and it'll be more accurate. But once you're done this, you click down in the bottom, apply and clear all. And now if you click your map on and off, you'll see it is aligned pretty well with the OpenStreetMap data. Um, obviously it's not perfect. If you wanna adjust it, you can click the template and drag it around um, or even click edit, oops. You can click edit positioning and then up in the top here there's a you can change the rotation um by small amounts like minus 0.7 and uh yeah and then adjust the map so that it fits well and then once that's all correct mine's a little off but uh it's approximately right so uh, you tend to want to do this as well as you can because otherwise the O range will be off But like I only use three points and this is already pretty good if you look at the trails and stuff So once you're done this you can turn It back to a hundred percent and now you have the map file completely georeferenced and we can actually disable the OSM file and From here we can save The map file we'll call it value forge test uh, we save the omap file is now georeferenced and we can go to purple pen and open the file so we'll create a new event we'll call it misery and we'll choose the map file this one one to ten thousand portrait sure we'll just go through all the default settings and then now that the map opens we can basically set courses and um, once you're done setting courses, you just uh, course, you just export the IOF file and, um, and you're pretty much done. So, so let's say this is our course, for example, we do file export uh data interchange file and then we can save this somewhere and this is what you upload to o range 
uh, let's look at what I saved. Um, so we have the misery.xml. And if you want to check if this worked, what you can do is click open uh, or right click on the XML file and click open in notepad. And what you want to see here are these control positions. And I believe if the control positions are in here when you upload it, oh, the iOS version is wrong, sorry. So when you export as an iOS file, you have to export it as a version 3.0 file. Um, and actually, I might have to rename it because otherwise it gets screwed up. Uh, maybe not. Sorry, this is chaotic, but hopefully it still helps. Um, so now that it's a 3.0 file, let's open it with Notepad. Um, so yeah, we now we have the lat long positions of each checkpoint. So if you have these, that means your map is correctly geo-referenced and your course checkpoints have lat long positions that um, your that O range can use. So if we now go to O range, um, no, not orange stroller. <laughs> o range orienteering. So now if we go to O range, we can upload this file. If we go to my courses, we can click upload event. And then we can just find the XML file, open it up, and we have the course. So yeah, that's all. Hopefully that helped, even if it was chaotic.